Hi, and welcome to this video where I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up Oracle VirtualBox and an Ubuntu server. So this video is actually really for the Elastic video series, uh, but this video will mostly just focus around setting up VirtualBox and setting up an Ubuntu desktop on it and then being able to SSH into that machine afterwards as well. So you have communication from your computer and this could be used for a bunch of different um, virtual labs that you might wanna run, uh, not just for the Elastic, uh, but we will be using this machine in our Elastic videos that will be coming out uh, next as well. So let's actually go ahead and let's get started with VirtualBox and Ubuntu Desktop. So the first thing that we're gonna to have to do now, I already have VirtualBox installed, uh, but to easily install VirtualBox, all you would have to do is come to your favorite browser and your favorite search engine, search for VirtualBox download, and then the first link should be the correct one, which is gonna be on virtualbox.org. And then you can download the Windows host or Mac OS or Linux host if you want to have the VM on another Ubuntu machine or any other Linux distro or on a Mac or on Windows. And once you download that, you're also gonna to wanna to download the Ubuntu desktop. And once you get on the Ubuntu webpage here, there should be a download option and that will download the file automatically for you. As you can see, once we actually get here, it will actually start the download. So we're gonna close that out here I've already downloaded both of these and I've installed VirtualBox already. So let's actually go ahead and let's see how we can create a virtual machine and install Ubuntu desktop on it. So once we have Oracle VirtualBox Manager opened, and the way that you would actually open that is actually just by coming into your programs and just searching for VirtualBox, and that should open up just fine. And then what you're going to want to do is you're actually want to click on new here. And this is where you're going to want to name your machine. So here we can actually just name it Ubuntu and I'm going to put YT for YouTube here. And then you're going to want to select the folder that you're going to want to install the VM on. Uh, this could be any folder. I usually just leave it at the default, which installs it in your user profile. And then go ahead and find that ISO file that you've downloaded. Uh, so for me, it's actually just right here in the downloads folder. We're just going to select that. Now, if you have an old version of VirtualBox, you might not have this option. Uh, but I usually skip the unattended installation, especially if you don't have a machine that's very powerful. I find it doesn't usually work very well. Uh, so we're going to manually install it. Uh, and once you have that checked, just click on next. And then here you're going to assign the memory or RAM and the CPU for this machine. I usually like to assign 4,096 megabytes or four gigabytes worth of memory. And I like to assign two CPUs. Now you could definitely assign more if you wanted to. The machine that I'm running this on isn't too, too powerful. So I'm going to assign just four gigs and two CPUs and we're gonna click on next. And then here it's gonna ask you what hard drive size do you wanna create? For us, honestly, 25 gigs will be just fine for what we're doing. If you obviously wanted to use Elastic or do a lot more with your Ubuntu box in a production style environment, you would probably wanna create a disk size a little bit bigger and you're probably not gonna be running this on a laptop like I am, uh, but we're gonna click on next and we're gonna click on finish here. And we have our machine right here. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do actually is just click on start here. And this will power up the virtual machine. Now this can sometimes take a few minutes depending on how powerful your system is. And then it's going to actually boot up to this little screen here. And this is gonna be our first screen that we get here. So what we're going to want to do, let me just reassign this here, is we're just going to want to do the try or install Ubuntu and then hit enter. And then this sometimes does take, again, a little while, depending on how much RAM and CPU you gave to your machine here. Uh, so I'm actually just going to go ahead and 
pause the recording and come back once it's done. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit of time with the four gigs and two CPUs. All right, so once it actually boots up here, it'll boot right up to this screen here, which will give you the option to try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu. So we're actually going to install Ubuntu and then just make sure that you select the language that you want to install in just here on the left hand side. So we're going to click on install Ubuntu. And here it's going to ask us to select our keyboard layout. I'm going to keep mine exactly the same. So just an English US keyboard layout. And here it's going to ask you what type of installation you want. For us, all we really need is just the normal installation and the download updates while installing Ubuntu. We are just installing a very basic version of Ubuntu desktop with the GUI just to easily get familiar with the Ubuntu system. We're going to be doing the whole install though of Elastic in the Elastic series completely through the terminal. Uh, but this is just a great way to maybe get an introduction to Ubuntu and Linux systems. So we're going to click on continue here. All right, and then it's going to prompt you to erase disk and install Ubuntu. Now you don't have to worry, this will not erase your Windows system. This will erase the disk that we created at the beginning with our virtual box setup. So it's just going to erase that virtual hard drive it created on your hard drive and install Ubuntu on that file. So we're going to click on install now. And we are going to click on continue on this pop up here. And it's going to ask you for your location or time zone. Um, so we're just going to leave it here. It's Toronto. It's the Eastern Standard Time Zone. We're going to click on continue. And then here it's going to prompt you for your name, your computer name, username, and password. If you actually just type in your name. So here I'm going to put in Jack Programmer. It'll automatically put a computer name that I'm just going to leave. And the username, it's going to put it as your name, which I'm also just going to leave. And then just pick a password here to use for your system. Since this is really for me just a very test environment that's going to be very isolated to this machine, I'm going to be deleting it right after these videos. I'm just picking a pretty weak password. I just don't want to make it that complicated and forget it. And I don't want to make it the same as my own in case I accidentally show it on these videos. Uh, it won't affect me. So just pick a password that you can easily remember. Um, and Try to have it secure if this is something you're going to be using for a while and then click on continue. And the password that we just picked is going to be really your root password. So you're going to have to remember it to do any of the installations of Elastic. And we are going to get to this screen here, which is going to be installing all the different um, things to the virtual hard drive here. So this can take a little bit of time. So I'm just going to pause the recording and we're going to come back at the next screen. All right, and once that installation is complete, you're going to get this pop up that's going to say installation is complete. You need to restart the computer in order to use the new installation. Just click on restart now. And this is going to reboot the machine and we are going to get a prompt to remove the installation media in just a moment here. All right, and actually in VirtualBox, we can actually just go ahead and hit enter actually, because it'll already be removed and it will actually boot into Ubuntu desktop. So let's just wait a moment here. This can sometimes also take just a little bit of time here. I'm just going to go ahead and pause the recording here. We're just going to come back once the system comes up.
All right, so the system is up here. So we're just going to click on our username here and we're going to be prompted for the password. So we're just going to put in that password here. And we are going to actually get into our Ubuntu desktop and we can actually just skip the online accounts for now. Uh, we can just keep clicking on next here to use the defaults here. Um, if you want to turn on location services, you can. I am not going to. We're just going to hit next and then click on done here. So here we actually have our Ubuntu desktop and we can actually see our IP address. If you click on this little network icon at the top and then click on wired settings. And we are going to see if you click on this little gear icon we will actually see our IP address, which is 10.0.2.15. Now, this is actually, we can't actually use this from our Windows machine. We wouldn't be able to communicate with this computer. We could set up some port forwarding and do some magic that way. But what I actually prefer doing is let's just minimize this virtual box here. So in the settings of our machine that we have, there is a network option here and is currently put to a NAT. So this will have an IP address on your computer and it'll just basically reroute and have it really just communicate with your computer directly and everything will be forwarded through your actual IP address. So what we're actually gonna to wanna to do is click on bridged adapter and then click on okay. And this is actually going to use your network card on your laptop or on your desktop, however you have this machine um, configured, this Windows machine configured, and we'll actually share that IP address. So now if we actually go back here, go into wired settings, click on the gear icon, here we have 172.30.123.15, and this is actually the IP range that I actually provide um, at home. So. It's good, it's getting an actual IP address. Now, the only thing that we actually need to do now is also download and install the SSH server. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to open up a terminal window. So if you click on these little dots here, uh, you can search for terminal or you can just open it if you see it here. And this is going to open up the terminal window. So now what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to turn on, well, first we're going to want to install um, open SSH server, and then we are going to allow it through our firewall. So the first thing that we're going to need to type in here is going to be sudo apt update, and then put in our password. And this sometimes can take, again, a little bit of time depending on uh, your internet connections and the amount of resources you've allocated to your virtual machine. Uh, but it normally doesn't take too, too long. So we're just going to let that run here. And it is all done. So if we do now a sudo apt install open ssh server, this is going to, and then we're going to put a Y here for yes. So this is actually going to install the open SSH server for us. Uh, so it's going to go through and do its thing. And once it's done here, we just have one other thing to do. And then we're actually going to be testing out connecting to our Ubuntu box through our Windows machine. So once we have our prompt again here, all we need to do is sudo ufw allow ssh, and that should be done. So now what we're gonna wanna do is we're just gonna minimize this Ubuntu window here. All we're gonna wanna do now is actually open up a web browser again on our Windows machine and go to our favorite um, search engine here which for me is Google. You can use Bing or DuckDuckGo or anything else as well. And we are going to look for Putty Download. And once again, it should be the first link here. 
it'll be download putty and the U will be lowercase and the rest of the letters will be all uppercase. And I actually, so if you click on download putty here, I actually like to download just the alternative binary file of putty exe. It's just a portable version of putty. So once you actually download that here, we are actually going to get so our downloads and we have putty right here so we're going to launch putty and we get this little window here so we will need our ip address so let me just go get that once more here because i i'm pretty sure it was a dot 15 at the end and it is so it is a 172 172.30.123.15 and we're going to leave it on port 22 that is the default port for ssh and we're going to click on open and then here we are going to have a security alert it's going to ask to make sure that you trust this computer we are going to click on accept and here it's going to say login as so here you're going to put in your username of your ubuntu machine so for mine we had put it as jacked programmer and it's going to ask us for the password so i'm going to put in the password here now you're going to notice there is actually no password similarly to how you type in a password in a linux machine if you've already used uh, linux this is completely normal uh, it is actually still there all you have to do is hit enter and you are in so we can actually see that we are in our virtual box environment as Jacked Programmer. So we can actually fully communicate, fully interact with our computer here, with our virtual machine through our Windows machine through PuTTY. Now this is very important to have this working because in our next video, uh, now of course, if you're just watching this video to know how to set up an Ubuntu server, this is good. This is the step where um, you are good to go. You can actually um, have this machine accessible on your network because it has an IP address on your actual network. So if you have other computers, you can actually interact with it. So if you want to host a web server or anything like that, you can do that. Now for the Elastic, it is very important to have this set up because we are going to be interacting with our Elastic server through PowerShell in Visual Studio Code. So we need this IP address, we need it to be able to access it. Uh, and this is the best way that I could use to show it as close to like a production environment as possible. Like I said, you could use the NATed addresses and do port forwarding, but I feel that kind of loses uh, some of its real life scenario uses. So hopefully this guy, uh, this hope, this helped you guys install Ubuntu on VirtualBox if you have never done it before. Um, Play around with Ubuntu. Maybe you will actually learn to really enjoy if you've never used it before. Uh, and this is just a good way to get some practice with using Ubuntu instead of installing it on your actual uh, daily driving computer. Um, get comfortable with it and maybe install it on another laptop down the road. It's extremely lightweight. It's extremely uh, useful for different types of system administration tasks as well. Um, especially if you're hosting web servers and etc. So if you guys have any comments or questions on this video, if you guys have any issues installing Ubuntu or setting up VirtualBox, please let me know in the comment section. I will try my best to help you guys out with that as well. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to hit that like button. Hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.